The second scripture reading this morning is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal, be aglow with the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his words. So this is our last Sunday um, in our kind of series of looking at what it means um, to be whole, looking at what it means um, for us to take space and time and Sabbath and practice loving creation um, and being in friendship with creation and being friendship with God and with others. And so we've got a, a one picture of that happening on our mission trip as everyone is hanging out together um, and practicing that friendship not only in the work that they were doing that week, but in how they were together um, and relating to each other in that week. And we come to today in this text where Paul sets it up for us and what friendship with God and what friendship with others takes and what it looks like. Um, I want to celebrate that that has happened this week. Um, it is good when we are gathered here together, when the brothers and sisters come and there are blessings that are here. Um, we were the church this week for the Cofield family um, who gathered to grieve and to mourn um, Bertie's passing. We had Linda showing up at 7.30 a.m. in the morning to get her thrifty penny work done so that then she could be there with the other thrifty penny volunteers to put on the luncheon for the family. We had Carrie rearranging her schedule um, to be able to be here. And then we had John show up because your pastor didn't even think about having a greeter and usher here for a funeral service. Um, and so John was just right there and making it smooth and making sure everyone was welcome and brought in. Dottie showed up the day after her eye surgery with her own medicine and compresses still working and putting things together. And our custodial support did the work for us without adding any additional cost, but needed us to do the setup. And so I came all ready to do tables and chairs, but Milt and Bill already had them done. Um, so we came together and, and worked together. And so Beth is here, and this is the day that it's our office administrator's very first day here. Um, and she's just jumping in and filling in as possible. It's the day we had our inspection for the new room that we're trying to open with our children's center. Um, and not only did Melissa, our director, manage that, but then also was ready to rearrange um, the kids' schedule and where they were if we needed the fellowship hall for longer. And I just need to close with, if you ever need some bacon, cheddar, devil eggs in your life, please see Lee. You will not be disappointed, and it will make everything better. We come together, and it is good when we come together because we're here to help each other with life. 
We're here to help each other do it. And when one is in a place where being faithful is simply getting out of bed in the morning and showing up, and that is the victory, there are others with more margin who can come and fill in the rest. That is why we do this journey together, and that's why it's gorgeous. And part of what I want to talk about is um, the imagery from the Psalms, because it talks about how beautiful it is and comparing it to the oil running down Aaron, the priest's beard, right? Like that there's enough oil. Think of the lady anointing Jesus' feet with perfume and that moment and that understanding and that experience of abundance. But then there's dew in Mount Hermon. And okay, that's nice, but do we really care? Um, so Wikipedia it um, or anything else to do a little research and why this is compared and such a big deal because Mount Hermon is a mountain summit um, in, in the area. It's on the border of Syria and Lebanon. There are three different peaks. And because of its height, it's almost always covered in snow. It is the water source for the area that's dry. So when the snow melt, for during the snow melts, it'll make streams and rivers right down the mountains that then come into the Jordan River. It's the source for the Jordan River, the river that the Israelites crossed over into the promised land, the river that Jesus was baptized in, the river of new beginnings, the river of promise. And it is all because of Mount Hermon. What would it look like if we can do for Cockeysville what we did for the Cofield family this week? What would it look like if Epworth, in summit with other churches in the area, can share the gifts and the resources, the water that is desperately needed in our community? What if we are the Mount Hermon? What if we are able to show a love and a hope that can transform lives and make people able not just to get out of bed in the morning, but want to, to have purpose, to have freedom, to have life, to have joy? Where are the parched places in our city that need tender care? that we have resources that we can give because of our life in Christ. Because, as Paul called us, of being rooted and believing in hope and being patient in suffering and persevering in prayer. Every single one of us will encounter a suffering in our life. Every single one of us will have a great battle to fight. But whether we can be a Mount Hermon or a Dead Sea depends on what we do with that suffering. Do we turn it over to God to breathe through and work through, to deepen in ourselves an awareness and capacity for empathy for others who are going through this journey? Does it become the seed not that shuts us down, but the seed that reminds us and centers us as we know how powerful God is because we remember the impossible that God made possible in our lives as God led us through the suffering, not as fast as we would have liked or as cleanly as we would want, but who tumbled what was meant to break us over into something that became our foundation and our assurance and our power. That is what we are called to do as disciples who follow Jesus Christ, who follow the Savior who went through a death of crucifixion, but who God raised to show us that path of new life and how to get through. But it takes all of who we are. Actually, it takes more than what we have. I really don't believe in that phrase, God doesn't give us more than we can handle. I think life gives us more than we can handle all the time. 
but I think that we are able to handle it because we don't rely on our power alone, but God's power through us and working in our community. There's no way we can manage all of this on our own. That's why we need our village. That's why we need our Mount Hermon to send us the waters and the streams that we have to have in order to be able to move forward. So I want us to look this week and to spend time seeing other people's battles and fights, seeing where suffering has turned those in our congregation and those in our community in on themselves, to see where it has shut people down and dried people up and to find where sources of hope are needed. Because it's when we see those places, when we are able to offer belief and hope and patience and suffering and perseverance and prayer, when we are able to find those harmonies, even as grating and as hard as they can be to find their truth and to not return evil for evil, but to return evil for good, to change the harmonies, to shift them to resolution, to find relief and hope for all. My favorite phrase in this whole entire chapter is, if it is possible in so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. We are called to an impossible task in this discipleship journey, and Paul's very real about setting the goal as high as it can be in the fullness of its impossibility because that is what is needed. But he's also practical about it. He knows that there are things that are going to be beyond our control that we're not going to be able to do anything about. And here's the catch. Paul won't let us see that that's beyond our control and use it as a get out of jail free card. Well, I can't do anything, so... I'm not going to do anything because there is always something in so far as it depends on us that we are able to do and that we are able to give. And so we do that and we let the Holy Spirit do the rest. It's like that scene that, right, that starts Les Mis where you got somebody who's taking advantage of the situation and stealing all that he can and gets caught. But instead of him getting what he deserves, he's given candlesticks in addition. And, and our Bible study group had some trouble, right, with that last phrase for if you leave room for God to have the vengeance, if you don't take vengeance, if you leave room to overcome evil with good, then you're heaping burning coals upon the other's hand. You're like, wait a second, that doesn't quite feel like what we're shooting for here. Like that, I think that's like more the phrase of like, do not lead me into temptation, because that's what I'd really like to have happen. Um, but think of the burning that happens when you don't get what you deserve. Think of how that unbalances all of who we are and changes the narrative that we're expecting and that we're used to and makes room for something else. Let's cut some channels, some new ways in our congregation and in our community. Let's do the unexpected. Let's be surprised and let's be surprising. And let's see the good that God can accomplish. The do and the answers to prayers that God can send out from the Mount Hermon to all of the other mountains and Zion. Let's be a source of life and of joy and of love that our world needs in order to survive. And then let's move beyond survival mode and let's start thriving. In the name of the Christ who came so that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen.